I'm Annie Cops and welcome to my kitchen. Now, I love Thanksgiving, but what I really like about Thanksgiving is actually the next day when you get to have all those leftovers. And I love, love, love a turkey sandwich and turkey tetrazzini, all, all of those things, but I thought this year I might have a little bit of fun with things like leftover mashed potatoes. So, today's hero, we're gonna make potato bread using leftover mashed potatoes. Now these mashed potatoes just have butter and a little bit of milk in them, maybe some salt and pepper, but if you use blue cheese or chives or even sausage or whatever thing your family likes to do with your mashed potatoes, you can still make this bread with those mashed potatoes. But it might not be a breakfast bread if it's got, oh, say, a strong cheese in them. So what I start with is one and a half cups of milk and three tablespoons of butter. Now you see, I melted the butter in the milk. That way we've just saved a step. So measure the milk first, one and a half cups, plop the three tablespoons of butter in there, and then into a mixer. You can also do this by hand. I have a dough hook on this mixer. I don't know if you can see that. How about that? That's a little bit better. To that, I'm, act act I'm, acting. I'm adding a package of active dry yeast, about a third of a cup of warm water, our one cup of mashed potatoes. Plop that right in there. Ooh, well, I really did plop it in there, didn't I? And let's get all of that. This makes the most beautiful light bread and it's just, and it's got a nice creaminess to it because of the potatoes and then maybe the milk and butter that you used. So I'm just gonna turn this on so they get to know each other. And to this, I'm also gonna add a tablespoon of honey. You could add maple syrup or even just plain sugar, but the honey really adds to the sweetness. Okay, and that's just enough. Now we're gonna to add to it flour. And this is five cups of flour. And we're gonna try and get that all in there without wearing it. But that's half the fun of bread baking, isn't it? Look at that! Okay, and again, that dough hook, down it goes. And again, you can do this by hand. Lock it in place. Now I'm gonna knead this by machine for about five minutes, but if you were doing it by hand, you wanna go about 10 minutes. Either way, until you have a nice, soft, but still firm and kind of shiny gloss to the outside of the dough. That's been about five minutes. Oh, and look at this beautiful dough. We're just gonna take it off the hook take the hook off the machine and lightly flour a work surface just so we can really have a good look see at what we've got here put some flour on your hands oh look at that isn't that beautiful wow so I'm just gonna do the last few turns by hand just so that I can really make sure that I know what's going on with this dough roll it around and see how just how soft and beautiful that is just gorgeous. So I'm kind of turning it into a ball and folding it, tucking it under, if that makes sense. Can you see the bottom of that there? And the top is smooth. Set that down. I'm gonna take a pan here, bowl rather, put some oil in there, swish it around, coat it so that the bread can not stick, plop into that, go there it goes, Cover it with a towel, and it should double in size. That should take about an hour, but depending on, oh gosh, whether it's a cold or hot day, how much moisture you have in your room, just the most important thing is that it doubles. And now the big reveal. It's been just a little bit over an hour, and our dough, oh, look at that bad boy. Doubled in size, and it is just, oh, it's gorgeous, it's so soft. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it in half, Pop, punch it down a little bit. You don't have to be fierce and, you know, punch it down really hard, but just let some of that air out. Cut it in half, and then I'm going to roll it and pop it into these loaf pans. Set it aside. And you have to be gentle with the dough, but not too gentle. Um, you know, it's, it's still living, and that yeast is still rearing to go, so there's not too much that you can do to mess it up. So this is sort of a uh, rectangular shape, and I'm just going to roll it like so. And you've got about a nine inch log and there's some bumps on the top, but don't worry about that. That'll all go away. And almost forgot to oil the pan. If you forget to oil the pan, it's not going to ruin 
the bread. It's just going to make it a little bit easier to pop it out. So oil it again. You could also spray it with nonstick cooking spray. That works as well. And again, this makes two delicious loaves. So in that goes, seam side down. And we'll do one more for you, in case you missed it the first time. Roll it. Squish it into a, so it's about nine inches long. Seam side down into the pan. Again, we're going to cover it for about an hour. More importantly, until it doubles in size. After we put the unrisen dough into the pans, we let it rise, again, doubled in size for about an hour. Then we popped it into a 375 degree oven for 30 minutes, and look what we got. This bread, like I said before, is absolutely delicious. It's great for sandwiches, maybe a turkey sandwich. We have some leftover turkey as well. It's great for croutons, um, you name it. I like it best, though, with a little bit of butter and honey on it, toasted. For this recipe and a whole lot more, come visit us at almanac.com.